switch back to English immediately because we have a very special guest, uh, Robert Ross, automotive consultant for Rob Report. Uh, because uh, Rob Report just published a pretty cool list of uh, the most fabulous cars in the world. How are you, Robert? Well, I'm very well. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, the Rob Report, uh, I understand, has been doing this uh, list for the best uh, uh, cars in the world uh, for 21 years. Is it that correct? Well, I did with the code, with uh, with Kurtco for that period of time. We've had Rob reports since uh, since 2001, and since uh, about uh, 2003, we've been hosting our Car of the Year event, which uh, essentially gathers uh, the most uh, interesting cars of the new model year, sports and luxury vehicles, and uh, pits them against one another in a very special kind of competition. Yeah. So, for uh, our audience who is not uh, very familiar with Rob Report, can you please? Uh Tell us exactly what it is, because this, this is a, a very, very exclusive uh, 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 magazine, right? Publication. Well, Rob Report is available on the newsstand, and it's uh, essentially a magazine that really talks about the best of the best, whether it's automobiles or, or uh, boats, aircraft, uh, watches, jewelry, wine, uh, travel, all of, the, all of the various accoutrements of, of, uh, a, uh, of, of an interesting lifestyle. Of course, cars are always the center of conversation because everybody has to drive, and it yeah. seems that everybody likes cars. And even though most of us, uh, the majority of us, cannot afford some of the cars that are uh, in this particular list, at least we can admire them and learn uh, a little bit more about them, right? And because this technology, eventually, some parts of it will trickle down to cars that we can afford. Well, that's absolutely right. In fact, you know, some of the days, uh, even the economy cars, least expensive automobiles, outperform just about anything that would have been on the market even 10 years ago. It's, uh, it's an amazing uh, uh, trickle-down theory, as you say. Yeah, very interesting. So um, I understand that you have the voting for the 2014 um, uh, list, and uh, it was uh, held after a pretty special uh, set of uh, test drives, right, out in California. Yeah, we do this uh, event every year up in Napa at uh, a, a place called Meadowood. It's a resort, and the nice thing is that we have some great roads locally that allow the, the judges, uh, all 100 of them this time, to uh, to drive the cars uh, on the on the streets, not on the track, and really evaluate what the automobiles do uh, in a real world scenario. And of course, the cars range from you know why the wildest sports cars to uh, to uh, some of the best uh, the SUVs and uh, and sedans. Yeah, and you mentioned a hundred judges. Uh, how is that a panel of uh, judges um, uh, arranged? Well, most of these judges are actually readers of the magazine. A lot of them uh, are members of the Rob Report Club. A lot of them uh, actually buy their seat at a charity at various charity auctions around the country. So. For instance, uh, we've had some people uh, pay as much as two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand dollars for an opportunity to join this event. Wow. Of course, it's all in the name of charity, so it's a great, uh, a great opportunity for them to donate to some of their favorite, uh, favorite causes. Oh, and that, that's great. So it just is not because uh, just enjoying the cars, but also trying to do something good for our communities, right? Yeah, I think you'll find that most of the folks that are involved are, are pretty philanthropically inclined. Of course, most of them are, are sufficiently, uh, uh, have the resources to actually buy the cars they drive, which is why it's an interesting event. We're actually talking to people who, who are in a position to buy these cars, and in fact, very many of them go out and order some of the cars that we, uh, that we drive. Right, right after they try them? Yeah, it's amazing. I, I think we, this event probably sells, sells more, uh, uh, more cars than any single uh, consumer event that I've ever uh, I've ever been involved with. It's it's very gratifying to see them sort of line up. They may want you know new Rover uh, anniversary uh, autobiography. They may want Ferraris. This one, wow. that one. <laughs> Everybody ends up walking away with a favorite. Must be really nice. <laughs> so it must be. <laughs> yeah. So uh, can we go a little bit through the list because the and, and and just like maybe focus a little bit on the winner the. Ferrari F12 Berlinetta, because not only it won the the, the voting this year, but uh, I understand it was an anonymous vote. Well, it was really amazing. I mean, this this is in all my years of doing this and in gathering cars as diverse as uh, you know Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Bentleys, Rolls Royces, all kinds of cars. This is the year that the car that was the winner, the Ferrari F12 Berlinetta absolutely took a landslide decision. There were a few dissenters. Some of the folks preferred maybe the Audi R8 V10 and a couple of uh, them maybe the Lamborghini Aventador or an Aston Martin Vanquish Volante. But, but 
overall, the Ferrari got more votes, hands down, by a landslide. The car just proved to be remarkable. It, it delivered on just about everything. Yeah, the Ferrari F2 Barinetta has a V12 engine with 731 horsepower, <laughs> yeah. 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds, and top speed of 211 miles per hour. I mean, like, just really an amazing car. I mean, everything that Ferrari does... Uh, Pretty much is, uh, I guess, it's been always on, on this kind of uh, voting for for Rob Report, right? Well, it, 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 Ferraris have always come out uh, as uh, as uh, in, in near the top of the list, and really, what what makes this car so remarkable is that even though you know you mentioned the horsepower and the top speed and the acceleration, those things are great, but there are other cars that do that. What the Ferrari does, what this car does, is put it all together in a package that's so complete, so easy to drive, so responsive, almost to your, to your every thought, you would think that this thing is hooked directly up to your brain. Yeah. It's an amazing achievement. Yeah. And, and it's all, comfortable, too. Exactly. And, uh, and uh, not only that, but uh, Ferrari is one of the few manufacturers that can really uh, export or like trickle down, as we were saying before, the, 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 the technology from Formula One to these kind of cars, right? That's right. Their racing, their racing experience really plays a big role in, in, in uh, allowing them to engineer this car uh, to respond in a way that uh, that really sets the standard for sports cars. Yeah. Some of the others that you uh, you like mentioned, some of the others uh, cars that uh, were in the in, in competition. Well, coming in second place uh, was the Audi R8 V10 Plus, which is a remarkable mid-engine coupe that uh, has been on the market for a while, but every year Audi has been able to uh, improve it uh, to some extent. And uh, really at uh, at about $200,000, it represents uh, the pinnacle of, uh, of sports car uh, design and uh, engineering and, and, and manufacture. It's really a beautiful car. And uh, right under that came... Uh, the most uh, probably the most audacious exotic, which was the Lamborghini Aventador Roadster. Yeah, that, uh, that thing looks like a spaceship, uh, truly from outer space. Yeah, uh, everyone loved it. Uh, it was uh, the coupe version was our car of the year a couple of years ago, um, but uh, a very single purpose car certainly. Yeah, uh, Lamborghini. Uh, <laughs> Lamborghini actually did a launch, the global launch for that car last year here in Miami, and they closed down the runway at the airport. <laughs> so oh man, a lot. We were driving those cars there, like it was. Just just an amazing, amazing event. So, uh, Robert, just like uh, we can just do up time because uh, obviously uh, this is radio and we have limited, limited uh, oh, time. So, the Aston Martin Vanquish Volante, the BMW M6 Grand Coupe, the Vendlay Flying Spur, the Porsche Cayman S. Like uh, talking about like very expensive cars, this car is actually kind of affordable. It's kind of like six starts around sixty five. I understand. Maybe a little bit it more. It was. Ours was ours was loaded to the tune of about a hundred thousand dollars. It was certainly fully optioned, but uh, we got that in there because we wanted to really explore what happens when you get into that uh, almost the affordable stratosphere. Yeah. And, uh, yeah but even acquitted itself it had a lot of it had a lot of fans. Yeah, Porsche actually is famous for that. I mean I was I had the privilege last week to go and drive the nine eighteen spider, the super oh, hybrid plugging hard in a uh, circuit of the Americas in uh, in Austin, Texas, and that car starts at eight hundred and forty-five thousand. And there's this an option, a performance option. <laughs> it's about ninety-five thousand dollars, which costs is more than a Cayman. <laughs> which is the, the price of that. Costs more than the Cayman. Yeah, the nine eleven. I mean, but it's like a, a fascinating world. Uh, just to like be a little bit in touch with that. So, uh, pretty fascinating. So, another Porsche car in your list, the Porsche Panamera Turbo, and then Jaguar, the F-Type, which has been winning a lot of uh, awards everywhere in the, around the world, right? That's right. That's right. Certainly look to them to do some interesting things in terms of safety engineering and, uh, yeah. and really advancing that state of the art. The Corvette Stingray, the new Corvette, which uh, it's, it's been fantastic and also winning a lot of things. The Mercedes-Benz S-Class, the Maserati Quattro Porte, Maserati is coming along really nicely lately. Then the Land Rover, Range Rover, Autogra Autobiography Edition. And then the Viper, which is also came back with a nice new uh, edition, like much, much improved from the previous one. That's right. That's right. Yeah. A lot of cars with a lot of different attributes. So, All of them worth driving. Uh, excellent. So, uh, Robert, uh, can you please uh, share like uh, where our audience can uh, again, maybe not go and buy one, but like maybe enjoy your report? Uh, where can they go online? I guess, or maybe buy the oh, magazine. Sure. At Absolutely. The magazine is uh, actually the uh, uh, the April 2014 edition of Rob Report. It is available on the newsstand. And if someone wants to uh, just have a little bit of a glance, uh, go to robreport.com. 
and exactly. uh, and, uh, and have some fun uh, have some fun sorting through all the great things on the site. Yeah, Robert Rose, automotive consultant for Road Report, uh, and Robert saw so that 2015 edition. When will those cars are going to be tested for by these uh, privileged uh, uh, people who do the event? Well, we're going to do it in November of this year and then publish it in April of 2015. And uh, as you mentioned, that great Porsche 918, I hope to have that there this year, along yeah. with some other cars uh, that really, really set the bar. Exactly. I think I think it's going to, I'm sure it's going to be there, and I'm sure it's going to be, uh, do well in your voting, too, because it's a fantastic car. Well, can't wait to try it. Thank you very much, Robert, and uh, we'll hopefully maybe maybe make a trip to California in November. Well, I would love to, I would love to meet up, and I certainly appreciate the hospitality and the opportunity to meet some of your uh, listeners. Thank you very much. A great pleasure. Take care. Bye. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.